Well, good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. Hello, everyone. My name is Rep Buttle. I am the co-executive director of Small Business Roundtable, and it is my pleasure to be here with you today. Um, we are so excited to host this conversation on the Restart Act. Uh, today, we're going to be hearing from the senator from Colorado, Michael Bennett, as well as Howard Schultz, the chairman emeritus of Starbucks, uh, two uh, amazing pioneers who need no introduction. Um, and also so many of the amazing uh, CEOs of the Small Business Roundtable uh, who are working in Washington um, every day uh, to uh, make sure that small businesses are represented. I just want to mo uh, take a moment and thank um, all of our members because without them, uh, this wouldn't be possible. Uh, so the National uh, Asian Pacific Islander Chamber of Commerce and Entrepreneurship, Disability N, the National Association of Self-Employed, the National Association of Business Owners, Next Gen Chamber of Commerce, the U.S. Hispanic Chamber, the U.S. Black Chamber, Small Business and Entrepreneurship Council, and the National Small Business Association. We've had over 700 small business owners register to join us today, and we've had over 500 business owners uh, sign a letter supporting the Restart Act. So it's been an amazing uh, few weeks of sort of getting folks over that we get this across the line. I also want to thank many of our affiliate partners. Uh, who've helped put this event together, AO, the Association of Women Business Centers, International Franchise Association, whose CEO is with us today. Thank you, Robert. LPAN, Small Business for America's Future, the National Association of Work First Boards, and the Page 30 Coalition. With that, I just wanted to briefly let you know what we can expect uh, for the conversation today. Uh, so after introductions, we'll hear from the Senator, uh, and we'll hear from Howard Schultz. We'll have some time for discussion and questions with our small business leaders. We, of course, look forward to getting comments and feedback from you in the chat. If you have any comments for us, please use the chat down in the right corner. We would love to hear your feedback. With that, it is now my pleasure uh, to turn the line over to the U.S. Hispanic Chamber, uh, Romero Cabasos, who's the president and CEO, uh, to uh, take us away. Romero, over to you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being with us today. My name is C. Leroy Cavazos Reina, representing Ramiro Cavazos, President and CEO of the United States Hispanic Chamber. For us, it's an honor to be here with our partners at the Small Business Roundtable with Senator Bennett and Chairman Schultz to have this robust and dynamic conversation as we charter forward in this country to recover small businesses their economic vitality and their business dignity as we recover collectively from COVID-19. The USHCC represents the interests of 4.7 million Hispanic-owned businesses that aggregately contribute an estimated $800 billion to the U.S. economy each year. We also serve as a network of 250 Hispanic chambers across the United States, and we are proud to represent respective constituencies that are in need of recovery, that are in need of legislative action, and that are in need of collaboration from lawmakers and organizations like our partners here at Small Business Roundtable, organizations like the ones that Chairman Schultz lead in order for us to recover. So at this time, it is my honor and privilege to present to you our colleague, Chaline Tong from National Lace. Chaline? Thank you. Thank you, my good friend Romero, for your remarks. My name is Chiling Tong. I'm the president and CEO of the Asian Pacific Islander American Chamber of Commerce and Entrepreneurship, also known as a National ACE. We represent 2 million Asian American Pacific Islander uh, community, business community, and have a 70 affiliate Asian chamber across the country. And we are a very proud founding member of the Small Business Roundtable. I'm very pleased today to introduce Senator Michael Bennett. Senator Bennett has been serving the great state of Colorado since 2009, and we are very thankful that he has taken the time to speak with us today. As a businessman, Senator Bennett has a vast experience with restructuring failing business, and he helped create the world's largest movie theater. He also has a first-hand experience in successfully guiding troubled business as they recognized under bankruptcy orders and restructured debt. 
In 2003, as a chief of staff to Denver Mayor John Hickelooper, he used his own business background to successfully balance a historical budget deficit, renegotiate a several collective bargaining agreements, and stimulus job creation by working with struggling business in the private sector. In May, Senator Bennett, along with Senator Todd Young, introduced the Restart Act to support a small and medium-sized business most affected by COVID-19. It will offer opportunities for loan forgiveness depending on business uh, losses. A senator and his colleagues to develop a serious package and solution to our country's most pressing needs. We are confident that Senator Bennett will continue to prioritize the needs of the small business community. We are honored to have Senator Bennett to join us this morning for a timely discussion on this important piece of legislation. Senator Bennett. Thanks, Jolene. And let me start my COVID uh, uh, meeting by asking John or somebody whether you can hear it or see me and see me. We can hear you just fine. Um, the video will be focused to the slides. Um, great, so we have that's perfect. That's great yeah. for everybody. Thank you. Well, listen, uh, Chalene and everybody else, thank you for joining the roundtable today. I, I cannot tell you how grateful I am for your effort to try to push this legislation forward. I want to thank, in particular, Howard Schultz for not only organizing this discussion, but for being uh, such a great partner over the last several months to help us build support for the Restart Act. We couldn't have gotten where we are without uh, his willingness to put his shoulder to the wheel. Uh, this bill uh, I wrote with Senator Todd Young from Indiana, uh, and it is the only bipartisan proposal of its kind in Congress. We now have 55 Senate co-sponsors, Democrats and Republicans, who believe this is, this is the support small businesses need to stay afloat through the end of the year and into 2021. Here are the numbers, which all of you know. Half of America's workforce works for a small business. As many as a quarter of small businesses are at risk of failure today through no fault of their own. Two in three small businesses don't have enough cash for three months of expenses. Half say it will take more than six months to fully recover. That's especially true for the hardest hit businesses that Restart is meant to help, like restaurants, breweries, salons, hotels, gyms, and seasonal sectors like tourism, so important to Colorado's economy and to the nation's economy. And unless we do something, we're going to see a lot of businesses close their doors and never reopen, turning millions of temporary job losses into permanent ones. I just spent the last several weeks during the August recess visiting with these business owners across Colorado. Several of the meetings ended in tears because they don't know how they were gonna pay their workers or stay in business when the winter months hit. This is the reality hundreds of thousands of businesses are dealing with uh, out in the country and it's the reality that Washington has ignored for too long. The only way to create long-term lasting relief is through bipartisan negotiation and legislation. That's exactly what we've done with Restart, and it's why we're here today calling on Congress to act urgently to pass it. Let me give you an example to explain more in depth how Restart would work, then I'll turn it over to Howard. If you're a sit-down restaurant or a gym, you've potentially been completely closed or operating at a limited capacity for months, and you're not going to be at full capacity for a while. The Restart Act would give you the support to sustain your business through the end of the year and into early next year. No interest would be due in the first year and no principal would be due in the first two years, giving you the runway to get back up to full strength. More than that, the Restart Act is the only proposal out there right now that would forgive a portion of the loan based on how much revenue a business has lost this year. And it would give businesses seven years to repay the rest of the loans say, so they have more flexibility. In other words, if you're a restaurant that senior revenues drop 60% this year, the amount of the loan we'd forgive would reflect that. At a broader level, the Restart Act recognizes that the pandemic hasn't affected all businesses the same and that relief should reflect that. It also recognizes that business decisions 
are best left to those who run them instead of dictating everything from Washington, which is why the loans have such flexible terms. Here's the bottom line. We simply can't let hundreds of thousands of small businesses go under. They are the heart of America's economy. You are the heart of America's economy. And now's a moment to listen to the business owners and workers across the country urging Congress to provide this relief. If you're a business owner who hasn't signed the letter yet, this is the time. Help us put pressure on the White House and congressional leadership to pass the Restart Act as we negotiate the next relief package. That's what I'll be fighting for in the coming days because our workers and business owners have no more, more time to waste. Now, with that, I want to turn it over to one of uh, America's great uh, business leaders and somebody who's done, made such a difference in this trying time to move the restart package forward. That's Howard Schultz. Howard? Well, thank you, Senator. It's, uh, it's Karen Kerrigan uh, from SBU Council, and I'm going to be introducing Howard this morning. And thank you uh, for, oh. those, um, for those remarks and, of course, everything that you're doing uh, on restart. Um, again, I have the distinct honor and pleasure to introduce Howard Schultz. He's the former chairman of Starbucks, of course, and truly the mastermind and visionary behind the success of this incredible brand. Uh, the Small Business Roundtable, which I'm honored to chair, uh, and our coalition of small business leaders are very excited that Howard is putting his energy into advocacy behind the Restart Act, as he knows firsthand what it takes to grind it out, so to speak, as an entrepreneur in good times and bad and assets of capital being central to growth and success. And of course, in times like these, survival or even to pivot and take advantage of new opportunities. So welcome, Howard. We are also very pleased that you're focusing your energy and passion toward helping America's small businesses during this very challenging period of time. The floor is now yours, Howard. Thank you. Karen, thank you very much. Appreciate that warm introduction. And Senator Bennett, thank you for uh, such a comprehensive explanation of the challenges small businesses face and how this is such a sense of urgency at this moment in time. Uh, let me try from my own perspective of explaining why I'm engaged in all this and why I know it's so vitally important to all of you. First off, I'm, I'm humbled by the amount of people on the call and i can hear from the people who have spoken the passion and concern you have for the for your own business and the people you represent uh, I, I think there's a few things going on here that i want to try and explain the first is that over the past few months even while ppp was being executed i was engaged in a lot of discussions with members of congress and although uh, so many of them were well-meaning with regard to their support of PPP. What I discovered to my surprise is that the majority of them, because they have no operating business experience, really knew very little about the challenges, the issues facing small businesses in America as a result of COVID. And what Michael and Senator Bennett just described uh, from his perspective is something that most members of Congress, unfortunately, do not understand. That they have not walked in your shoes. They're, they're empathic, but they don't understand specifically what you're dealing with. So first and foremost, as Senator Bennett said, it is very, very important that in addition to the 100 CEOs who signed the original letter, the letter that's going out again, I must have your signatures on it because the sense of urgency right now is we need a tidal wave of support from you and your members to get the time and the attention of members of Congress. In order to try and describe to members what we are dealing with, I have used the expression that small businesses in America need a financial economic bridge to the vaccine. And specifically, what I mean by that, I'm sure you understand, is as Senator Bennett said, we need three to six months, maybe longer, financial support so small businesses can, make, can navigate through this unprecedented moment. Now, for me personally, in 1987, Starbucks was a small business. 
I, I knew what it meant not to be able to make payroll. I knew what it meant to try and just do everything we possibly could, fighting passionately as young entrepreneurs to save our business. And we didn't have the challenge of COVID. We were just trying to make it through. And so I've, I've walked in your shoes and I know firsthand what you were all dealing with. I also know that if this bill does not get integrated into the comprehensive stimulus package necessary for the country, that small businesses will be wiped out across America and there will be a fracturing of economic carnage unprecedented in this country. But in addition to that, what really concerns me is that it'll be a fracturing of local neighborhoods and communities where small businesses are such a major part of the sense of community, a sense of gathering, and a sense of belonging that small biz businesses represent in every community in the country. I've already seen in my city in Seattle and in New York in the last week, how many small businesses are already boarded up, how many small businesses have already decided we can't make it. Not to mention that many of these small businesses are represented by, by minorities and African-Americans. We have to do everything we possibly can to ensure the fact that Congress recognizes the sense of urgency, the need for an economic bridge to the vaccine, and the cost of not doing this will be much, much greater to the economic peril of the country and the social fabric of America. And so I thank you for being on the call. I thank you for your support. I thank Senator Bennett and Senator Young for their unparalleled leadership with regard to this issue. And I encourage everyone on this call and everyone that you represent to sign the letter that we're sending and the need for a tidal wave of support to communicate to every member of Congress who represents you to understand the vital moment and the sense of urgency necessary to make sure that Restart gets integrated into the stimulus bill. Thank you very much. Great, well, thank you so much, Howard. Uh, again, your, your passion and energy, just from those remarks, we, all of us in the small business community right now are just so pleased that you're on our side um, and you're out there. And um, so I'm so very grateful for you. Um, I'm going to, uh, the first question, um, actually, I'm going to direct to uh, Senator Bennett. Again, this is Karen Kerrigan with SBE Council. Again, Senator, thank you for your efforts. This is more related, I guess, to the legislative state of play in terms of where we are and, 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 and perhaps sort of the process. Um, have you been, obviously the bill is bipartisan, but have you been speaking with um, members um, from either side of the aisle who may want to see modifications to restart? And is there currently an open dialogue and opportunity uh, to make those recommendations? So I know there's a lot of moving parts in terms of a, a bigger stimulus package and things going on right now. Um, but I guess, you know, just sort of an update on, on your conversation with other members and any possible modifications they may be asking for. I would say uh, people are pretty satisfied with the bill as it is because we've got 55 co-sponsors. Mm -hmm. I've said from the very beginning, uh, and Howard knows that I believe this, I've said from the very beginning, if somebody's got a better idea or they can improve what we've put in, I'm all ears. My objective is not to pass restart. My objective is to save America, to help save America's small businesses. I think restarts the best bipartisan idea we have, but we're, we're always open for business uh, to, to improve it. One of the reasons I think that it's in, 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 in good shape in, in terms of the substance of it uh, is that, um, uh, is that uh, it was really written in a sense by Colorado's small businesses, our hardest hit businesses for whom the original programs were not working. And so I think that We've gotten a ton of feedback over the months and, and we've welcomed that, we continue to welcome that. Um, and it's gonna have to continue to be shaped as the negotiations go forward. So for example, if the, what, if the total amount of money is less, we might have to, have to turn the dial on 
you know, what businesses are eligible or, or, or what, how much of the loans are forgivable. Uh, to make one final point, the reason I think forgivable loans are so important is the last thing um, small businesses need across the country is to have more debt on their balance sheets that's not forgiven. As was mentioned earlier, I used to make my living turning around uh, failing businesses in bankruptcy, and I, so I have some sense of of not wanting to burden businesses more. So that's where we are. We, If you have ideas that will improve it, we'll take it. In the meantime, uh, I just would echo what Howard said, which is it is so important at this moment for people, if you have not signed the letter that Howard has circulated, to please sign that letter. That That's what will move us forward. Great. Thank you, Senator. And um, I'm turning it over to Todd McCracken right now. Todd? Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, great discussion. Thank you, Senator, uh, for that. I just have a question for uh, Howard Schultz. So we're really pleased that you're turning your time and energy to helping small businesses. And I'm just curious, you touched on this a little bit in your in your in your opening comments, but I wonder if you could elaborate on why your you know experience as a CEO um, uh, has led you to realize how important this is and why you want to dedicate your energies to the small business community. I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit more about that. No, oh, Todd, thank you so much for the question. I, it's a pretty easy one for me. Uh, you know, my personal background, having grown up in public housing and uh, had the good fortune of kind of living the American dream, but that, that American dream was based on the opportunity as a young entrepreneur to to basically open up a few coffee stores. And, you know, while we were doing that, we, we, we recognized the, the degree of difficulty and at the same time, the opportunity. Well, COVID didn't exist back then. And so we had a, a lot of running room to build our business uh, the way we envisioned it. Not to mention the fact that we had tremendous support from like-minded people who wanted to give a small business entrepreneur the help and support to try and live his, his dream. Now, Starbucks has stores today, fortunately, in almost every community in America. As I have visited those communities over the years, I have seen firsthand the like-minded dream that other small business owners had who were adjacent to us or near us or who were vendors to, uh, to our company. And uh, it pains me. It, it just, it breaks my heart to talk to people today, as Michael said, to no fault of their own, who are facing catastrophic challenges. And when I think about this, the situation, what the, what the bill unfortunately cannot do and what the letter cannot do, it can't capture the emotion, the challenges of small business owners, mom and pops, family owned businesses, who are facing dire, dire straits and seeing their lifelong dream, the American dream challenge fracture. And so I, I wanna do everything I possibly can to walk in those people's shoes, elevate their story and get people to understand that this bill is a lifeblood for people who deserve it the most. Uh, these people don't have a voice, they don't have lobbyists, they don't have the resources to have access to members of Congress. And so I'm trying to be a conduit for them. I'm trying to be a voice for them. And uh, I understand with great empathy and compassion what these people are facing. I've had a number of webinars with small business owners over the last few months trying to give them any kind of insight experience, but most importantly, to listen to them because they feel they have no voice. It pains me to no end to think that people who have worked so hard have lost faith in the country, lost faith in their government, because no one is listening, no one is understanding. And uh, I just can't, you know, I think it's like, it's, it's like this. When you are exposed to a situation and you see it for what it is, you have a choice to make. And the choice is, do you look away and turn away, or do you lean in and try and help these people and help the situation? And so I'm doing everything I possibly can from my position and uh, uh, to lean in and to try and influence and persuade. And I, I told one senator, I will beg you to, to do this. I will beg you to do this because it's so vitally important. 
And so I just, I can't imagine uh, that members of Congress are gonna allow these wonderful, extraordinary people to be left behind and have their dreams fractured and crushed because members of Congress are not doing the right thing. And I just hope this is not a moment in time where people like Senator McConnell and others are gonna play politics because this is a bipartisan effort in which Speaker Pelosi and, and uh, McConnell have got to come together with the White House and Senator Bennett and Senator Young's support to get this thing done. But, you know, we're, we're in the ninth inning here. Uh, we, we don't have much time. And that's why we need everyone's support. And I will say a little bit of a prayer to hope to have this, uh, this done. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, um, everyone. My name is Ron Busby. And again, I'm the president and CEO of the US Black Chambers, Inc. As most of the country has witnessed, black businesses have suffered tremendously. We've lost nearly 500,000 black owned businesses uh, during the pandemic. And so my question for both of you uh, is, under this specific piece of legislation, how do you see this bill impacting black owned businesses as we prepare to restart the economy uh, because we know that we need not just the finances we need the opportunities as well as good policy to move our communities forward thank you maybe i'll take that first it's michael if you can hear me yes yes great uh, i really appreciate the question you know after i was uh, in a um, had my career in business, I had the privilege to become the superintendent of the Denver Public Schools, which is a, man, a, a majority kids of color school district, like so many urban school districts across the country. So this is an issue. These are issues that I'm very focused on. We we have language and restart that explicitly expresses the need for SBA and Treasury to coordinate on doubling down to reach underserved businesses, including the smallest minority owned women owned and rural businesses that are are in in these programs are often the last to get help our our intention and in restart is that they will be there at the starting line with everybody else we also include a few key features we have a few others that will be in parallel to ensure restart does a better job getting funding to underserved businesses first we designed restart with a much more graduated origination fee structure than ppp which will put a thumb on the scale for doing smaller loans. Since it's a six month loan product instead of an eight week product, the amounts will be significantly larger for the smallest business. So just by way of example, if you got a $50,000 PPP loan, you'll probably get something like 175 to $200,000 from Restart. That makes it more economical for banks to serve the smallest customers since fees are a share of loan size. Also, fewer businesses will be eligible because what we do with this bill is target the hardest hit. So, so and in, with PPP, there were businesses that did just fine that got the loan. I think as a result of that, there's going to be less of a, 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 a glut of borrowers on the front end. Senator Young and I also are fully supportive of doing more things to get funding to the hardest to reach businesses, including maximizing the amount of funding to go to CDFIs and minority depository institutions or MDIs. Senator Warner from Virginia also has got a very good bill on this and the HEROES Act, which was the, the version of the uh, stimulus bill that the House passed, had a, a set aside as well. I think either approach works for us and we know this is a focus for at least Leader Schumer and Speaker Pelosi others who have pressed us on this issue. And as I said, I want to be clear about it. Senator Young's team is also on board with this as well. Finally, we're also, we also support setting aside a share of the funding to be enough to meet the full need of the smallest businesses. Heroes in the House has it at um, fewer than 10 employees. It could be up to 25 or 50 so that they don't have to compete for dollars with larger businesses and don't have to rush to the, you know, have the rush to the entrance issues that we saw in PPP. I think we should learn from what we did before and make it better. And I, and I believe that's what we've done with Restart. So we're open to supportive of any and all ways to make sure that the most underserved businesses get help from Restart. If there's more that we can do, please let us know. And 
and uh, and thank you for your interest in in this bill. I I think once again, Senator Bennett has really answered the question uh, so beautifully and with comprehensive understanding. Uh, the only thing I would add is that I think the passage of a stimulus package with restart in it will be a significant catalyst uh, for the private sector to step in as well as uh, philanthropists and foundations. The work that Darren Walker at the Ford Foundation is already leading uh, for significant investment into the African-American community is one place, the work that Robert Smith is doing. Uh, so I think the awareness uh, of, of this bill and its passage will be a significant catalyst for others to step in and support the African-American community. But I, I think Senator Bennett answered it beautifully. Thank you. And this is John Stanford, uh, my colleague, uh, Rhett Buttle, and co-executive director of Small Business Roundtable, open today's event. Um, but I think that's a, a fitting place to close off is um, how impactful this legislation can be for all communities. Um, so many uh, and communities of color, women of colors, others didn't necessarily reap the rewards of the first round of support in the CARES Act. And I want to commend, policy making isn't easy. Um, it's tough to sit down with a blank piece of paper and come up with policies that will make a difference. And I really want to commend um, Senators Bennett and Young uh, for working together in a bipartisan manner, um, which is, is all too few these days, um, but really has been a hallmark of uh, Senator Bennett's career. Um, but policymakers alone can't get this done. It's important that there be noise and attention and support um, behind any policy that really stands a chance of garnering support, not just in the Senate, as this bill clearly has done, but also being important to members of the House. Um, what happens in Washington requires the input of thousands, if not tens of thousands of <laughs> folks around the country. And to that end, what Howard Schultz has done um, in his capacity as a thought leader for the entire business community in driving that first letter to put restart in front of so many CEOs of companies, big and small, really catalyzed the conversation that we're having today. But we're here midway through September. Um, we have a looming deadline uh, of, of the federal budget, and we have a looming deadline in that businesses need support. And so it now is the time when Congress can act and act in a way that makes clear that businesses of all stripes Remind, remain important to the U.S. economy. And the Restart Act, um, through a number of ways that Senator Bennett detailed, um, would do that. And that's why so many organizations on the phone here today and across the country have endorsed this legislation, have loudly supported it, and hope to see it in uh, the final package. Uh, but we cannot do it just as organizations alone. There are hundreds of you on this call who have your own small businesses. Uh, who are an important constituent to members of the U.S. Congress. Your voice has to be heard in concert with ours and with Howard's and thousands of others who support this legislation. And so we'll be following up with every attendee to this uh, webinar today. Um, hopefully you have learned more about the Restart Act and you are willing to put your name uh, along with hundreds and thousands of others uh, in support of the Restart Act through the letter that will be circulating. So again, keep your eye out in your email that you registered for this webinar with um, to receive a link uh, to a letter that confirms support for the Restart Act, makes a clear signal to Speaker Pelosi and Majority Leader McConnell that this is a key solution. Um, and again, I wanna thank all of our speakers, our incredible CEOs that make up Small Business Roundtable um, from around the country. Uh, I want to thank uh, Senator Michael Bennett um, uh, for his leadership, not just on today's call, uh, but throughout his history in the United States Senate, and, for, and of course, Chairman Schultz, uh, for um, not just showing what the American dream can be, but what American stewardship and success can look like even after a successful career. Um, and then finally, I want to thank the hundreds of you who joined for another conversation with Small Business Roundtable. You can find more and a recording of this at www.smallbusinessroundtable.org. Please stay in touch. 
and thank you everyone for joining us today. This will conclude our webinar. Thank you.